Afghanistan has been in a state of war for 40 years. The ferocious guerrilla war, which ended the Soviet occupation of the 1980s, was followed by years of bloody infighting between rival warlords. The fighting ended when a group of mullahs known as the Taliban seized power. The group's rigid Islamic doctrines subjugated women, silenced the press, and made Afghanistan a safe haven for radical Islamists. After 9-11, the US invaded Afghanistan, which had sheltered the attack's mastermind, Osama bin Laden. After driving the Taliban from power, the US brought back the warlords and poured in billions of dollars to build a modern democracy. 18 years on, with daily violence and millions displaced, the US is still in Afghanistan. And the Taliban, with the backing of regional powers, is stronger than ever. Eager to draw an end to America's longest war, US President Donald Trump sent his envoy Zalmay Halazad to parley with the Taliban. We have reached an agreement in principle with the Taliban. The Afghan government was excluded from talks. Washington offered to withdraw its troops if the Taliban agreed to stop sheltering terrorists. Guarantees on women's rights, press freedoms, and a modern justice system were of less significance. Just as a deal seemed imminent, the talks collapsed. With confusion over US plans to leave Afghanistan and with little sign of a Taliban ceasefire, it remains unclear whether inter-Afghan peace talks will make any headway. Can the Taliban's fundamentalism be reconciled with Afghanistan's attempts to build a modern democracy? Are Afghans willing to sacrifice civil rights for the sake of peace? I've come here to the Afghan capital, Kabul, to speak to those involved in talks and to those who will live with the consequences. ولاکوربورگهی نه در وقت دوران کرزای خوب بود کار بار بار ایسا فریمان بود یکم از این دکومت که امنیت از خوب بود امنیت نام نزگاه نه سالتا خانه در پس جور میرین چلقه منو مالوم ازه 
که از خانه مبرای یه توکل به خداست Human beings are economic beings, so they, they will leave the country for reasons of, of economics, for if their livelihoods aren't sustainable. Conflict has a, a detrimental impact uh, on the economy. We see that not only here, but, but around the world. And uh, countries that don't experience conflict on an ongoing basis tend to prosper. So. دوره چل سال شده می کار و کسب ما قالیم فروشی است و کاربار ما همیت تاثیر گذار است اگر همیت خوب باشه مشتری هم زیاد می باشه اگر همیت خوب نباشه مشتری هم طبعا گم نست هر چی که ما چیز کنیم کاربار ما کلش به حساب خارجی ها به حساب امنیت است به حساب همی گپاست که, که چیز کنیم امنیت باشه کار خوب می باشه امنیت نباشه کل چیزه با هم خوردگی پوره کرده نمیشه مال نسبت به سابق که بود دوره کرزه قطا بازار خوب و امنیت نسبی خوب بود ما پرامدن ما نمایش ها می رفتیم بر ما کار ما خوب سولت داشت خوب بود حالی چون که روز در روز کار ما تو نیست که پایین بالا بالا همه پایین رفته رایز دیگه ما هم دست پنجه نرم کرده کتیش رایستیم که تا چی وقت چون همی کار ماست همی بار ماست ما نمیتانیم مال داریم So of course we hope that peace will come and, and things will improve. Um, if the opposite happens, and we, we hope that doesn't happen, but if the country does slip in the other direction, then clearly humanitarian needs will grow, displacement will grow, uh, there'll be even fewer uh, young children, especially young girls uh, in school. Uh, the social infrastructure of the country will be strained, uh, um, hospitals, uh, water facilities, uh, and of course it'll have a, a massive negative impact on the economy. Well, I'm not a processor, as a brother Kushi, as a Bikori, Biamni, or the Toroka, that a processor, a processor, a slibosha. ما خوش هستیم که باید هر کی که باشه سال به افغانستان بیاره ما از افتخار میکنیم خوش هستیم پشتیبانیش میکنیم پروسه که ناکام باشه و پروسه یک ساخت کاری باشه و پروسه به نفع مردم افغانستان نباشه ما راضی نیستیم افغانستان is frequently called the graveyard of empires Nowhere captures that moniker better than this graveyard of Soviet war machines east of Kabul. Does the US face a similar fate? Could its withdrawal make matters worse? We should not make a mistake of 1989 once again to leave Afghanistan by itself. We should not make a mistake to deal with a terrorist group. We should not really kind of put the whole situation in Afghanistan and the region in sort of jeopardy here. Tomorrow we will regret it. The whole world will regret it. Exactly what my brother wanted when he went to Europe 19 to 2001. He said today it's our problem, tomorrow that would be your problem. Exactly that would happen. So what I'm trying to say is here, we should not make Afghanistan as a safe haven for terrorists Tomorrow it will be end of war, right? It will kind of affect every citizen of every country. This is Ahmed Wali Masood. His brother Ahmed Shah Masood is Afghanistan's national hero. Known as the Lion of Panjshir, the Tajik guerrilla leader 
defended his valley from the Soviets and the Taliban. I asked Wali Masood why the Taliban has refused to negotiate with the government. Well, uh, for a very simple reason, because government of Afghanistan is weak and uh, no one talks to the weak body and that's why they refuse. If only we did have a strong government, of course, Taliban branded as terrorist group, they would never refuse to talk to a government. So because government is weak, Taliban feel they are stronger. Yes, people of Afghanistan are thirsty for peace. But peace, not a deal. Peace, not terrorism, not violence. Peace, not submission to a terrorist group. But when it comes to the real peace, what exactly, how exactly you can solve these uh, very contradictory values between the Taliban and the rest of the people of Afghanistan? Ooh. What do you do with women's rights? Taliban do not agree with women's rights. What do you do with media, with freedom of media and press? They don't agree. What do you do with election, with democracy? Because if the Taliban accept such thing, what it means? It means that they have gone against their own values. It means that they have gone against all those, in their words, who are martyred for going against these values. They are going against their own principle. Don't forget that so far since the creation of Taliban until now, their position have not changed exactly the same thing as it was before. Regarding anything, it has not changed. Nothing. TOLO is Afghanistan's biggest private news network, broadcasting 24 hours a day nationwide. Press freedoms have come a long way since the Taliban days. Yet Afghanistan is among the world's most dangerous places to be a journalist. On September 5th, 2018, Tolo correspondent Samim Faramaz and cameraman Ramiz Ahmadi were sent to report on a bombing at a wrestling club in West Kabul. Minutes after their live report from the scene, a second bomb exploded. And uh, two of my colleagues, uh, Sami, Sami Faramar and Rama Zahmadi, were killed in, in a twin bombing in Kabul uh, when they were reporting uh, from a previous uh, attack uh, in, in Kabul. Um, it's very tragic. We have lost 11 colleagues in the past three and a half years um, in, in many, many um, attacks. Uh, two or three of them are um, claimed by the Taliban. Uh, and uh, others uh, claimed by, by Daesh. Uh, it's not just Daesh, it's not just the Taliban, but mafia, drug lords, uh, strong men. Um, uh, and Afghanistan is also uh, one of the countries where rule of law is least implemented. This mural in downtown Kabul was painted in memory of Samim and Ramiz. There'll be many more like them in a country where journalists are explicitly targeted. I think I can, I can speak on behalf of all of my colleagues because the people who work uh, in, in, in media, particularly in Tolo, they may have the options of uh, uh, going abroad, taking their families out, do something much different, much easier, but their commitment to the cause of um, freedom, freedom of expression, uh, I think is something that uh, contributes to the success of where we are. To be honest, today, Afghanistan today, two-thirds of the country under 25. Do they remember how the Taliban era looked like two, days, two decades ago? Do they really remember how does it feel to, let's say, not have a free press? not be free enough to post um, a comment on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter? Can they really imagine this generation, the, the two-thirds of Afghans, 60-70% of the entire country, 
Can they really imagine that they will be asked what to wear, how to act, how to travel? I think there will be a big backlash because this generation owns some of these achievements. These are not introduced to them. It's these rights and gains. You won't get peace. That's civil war, that's conflict, that's content continuation of, of violence. Kujo mori ki mori, kujo mori ki mori, dudida intezora, ke dilma be karora, dudida intezora, ke dilma pur sharora, ke eshkad mondegora, ke eshkad mondegora. Zemin oye khodora gul be karum, ke yarma me yavu dil be karorum. To sit in, the, in one room with Taliban and to face them for the first time after the, uh, the government uh, has fallen in Afghanistan was not an easy experience. Um, every woman who lived in Afghanistan paid um, the price of, of Taliban government. Personally, uh, they have stopped education um, from me and many other women. Um, they put my husband in jail. Um, I have seen women were beaten up in front of my eyes. Um, I have seen that um, horrible things happen. So every Afghan in Afghanistan remember those um, memories. And to therefore, um, you know, go with those memories and face Taliban is not a nice moment. It is not a pleasant um, atmosphere. I want to, uh, to assure that I'm uh, the government. Th this is not the idea of Afghan government to sacrifice uh, or sacrifice women's rights. It's uh, several times that I have heard from the uh, uh, the president and the CEO that they c cannot sacrifice the women's rights for the for the peace process. Of course, we are paying. We have to pay a price for the. Uh, um, for the peace process, but it doesn't mean that that price can be only the women's rights. How they can accept that to go back uh, again to, to 20 years or 30 years ago? This is uh, impossible. No, it's not a problem. If the decision is that the human rights of the human rights and the human rights of the law of the Afghanistan is a problem, it's not a problem. فقط آتش زیر خاکستر میمونه فقط یک موافقت نامی ناکامی هست که به زودی افغانستان شاهد یک حرج و مرج است که جبران نمیشه ما در نقاط دوردست افغانستان هنوز هم در ولسوالی های افغانستان که امنیت نسبی حاکم نیست شاهد سنگسار زنان هستیم زنان دور زده میشن زنان تیرباران میشن از جانب مخالفین مسلح دولت افغانستان ما شاهد محاکم صحرایی هستیم و از همه بدتر ما شاهد قتل های ناموسی هستیم زنان به دست نزدیکترین اعضای خانواده شان به قتل میرسن که مسما به قتل های ناموسی است ما هنوز هم شاهد مرگ و میر مادران هستیم موارد خشونت علیه زنان با قوتش هنوز در افغانستان وجود داره از ا مادر ایتس دی ورست کانتری تو تو بی ا مادر um, if you look at all the indicators, it, it has the, low, the lowest literacy rate for women. It has the lowest um, economy for women. So already we, we are an oppressed country for women. How much more shall we compromise? Um, and I don't think it's realistic and it shall be also logical to expect women to give up. We don't have enough to give. شاهد خشونت های خیلی زیادی بودیم در طی 18 سال هم چرا به خاطر اینکه هنوز هم ذهنیت های طالبانی وجود داره در جامعه وقتی زنای کشور ما در خطر باشه دیگه این معنیش صلح نیست معنیش تسلیم شدن هست This is Leila Hidari She's Hazara a persecuted ethnic minority which practices the Shia branch of Islam her cafe, the Taj Begum, is one of the few places in Kabul where unmarried men and women are able to meet freely in public, to the dismay of religious conservatives. A well-known social activist, Lele uses her cafe's profits to help and employ recovering drug addicts. 
من نه سال پیش به عنوان اولین زنی که یک رستوران را در کابل ایجاد کردم او زمان واقعا برای مردم خیلی تعجب برانگیز بود که یک زن آمده و رستوران داری میکنه و قابل قبول نبود برای مردم اما امروز شما در هر جای افغانستان ببینید زن ها رستوران دارن بیزنس میکنن یکی مردم توهین میکنن، تحقیر میکنن طرز لباس پوشیدن ما برای مردم متعارف نیست اما کسی نمیتنه از لحاظ قانونی بر ما فشار بیاره که شما لباستان باید مثلا طبق میل ما باشه یا نحوه زندگیتان طبق میل ما باشه اما اگر طالب بیاید مطمئنا ما حتی امی انتخاب در لباس پوشیدن خوب و نحوه زندگی خود نخواهیم داشت چون اونها از یک ایدولوژی میاین که او ایدولوژی بر مبنای زن سیتیزی و حذف زنان است پنج روز پیش یک ده آدم تونرو و ملا به همراهی پلیس مردم عادی رو تحریک کردودن و آوردودن سر رستوران ما تا اینکه اینجا از بین ببرن آمدن اختار دادن و سایل ما رو شکستاندن و اختار دادن که اینجا رو آتش میزنن و همچنین یک خوابگاه دخترانه رو بروی ما هست اونا رو اختار دادن که اونجا رو از بین ما برن و در واقع ما در او صدای پای طالبان را میشنویم که در جامعه در او حضور پیدا مونه در تمام نگرانی مینیمی هست که صلح بیایه ما زنها دوباره به عقب برگردیم در پستوهای خانه خوب بخزیم و در واقع هر روز ما را دادگاه صحرایی محاکمه صحرایی کنند و در ملای عام ما را شکنجه کنند ما این روزها را در او میبینیم در او همیال احساس میکنم Women like Layla are not prepared to sacrifice their rights for the sake of peace. If anything, they're demanding more from Afghan society. These women ran for parliament in October 2018, determined to represent women in their isolated rural constituencies. They say their votes were stolen, however, as corrupt officials allowed rivals to buy their seats. The government, itself accused of fraud, has failed to investigate. Their protests at the presidential palace were met with violence. Robbed of their voice, several of them sewed their lips together. While others went on hunger strike. Chima da fara fil hal chine de dega hokmat aunad de talib termand mata hista opir nashta. Wale chima po khwa uridili wuchi Taliban na khud sar khushnat kau Taliban khazi wahale au ranga rang maktalif. Wakti chikla munga khpala da dalat khwa hai. غاق پورت کرد منگا د پولیس لو لورو نه منگا د غمرمن و وهل شو لاسونا مو مات شول وینې زمنګ پر مخونو راغل چې منګ سره اکسونه ویډیوګانې هر څه تاسو دلې شي اوس د پدې اند ما یا پدې فکر رسیدل ما چې هغه طالب چې منګ قصی او ریدلې وی چې دوی اوس بیا غواړي په منګ حاکمان شي او دغه نظام دغه پولیس چې اوس دغه د خوزو د حقونو داد کوي او یا هم دیموکراس خلک دي د دوی تر مز مال لپاره هیڅ توپیر نشته یی کې مذاکره سول باندې امریکا او طالبان پسی با سوت مردمی افغانستان چیز یا میخوایند که پروژه طالب پس بیارند در افغانستان به نام سلحه با او مشروعیت سیاسی بتن و را در پارلمان نظام افغانستان برشان سهم بتن برسمیت بشناسن در اینجا باز امریکا برای با جای خود قرار بیره فقط درگانه استخباراتی خود در افغانستان بمانه و قوی نظامی خود اخراج کنه در اینجا جنگ داخلی می در افغانستان شروع میشه دستانداز جای پاکستان و ایران و هندام زیادتر شده می روه پس قربانی که مردم افغانستان در چل سال پینجا سال داده و این نسل بعدیش هم قربانی خواهد شد تاسی و گوری تقریبا سو مرمنو د عدالت د پاره خیمه و هلا دغه افغان دغه افغان حکومت یا سو مرمنو ته قناعت ور نه شکړلې هغه طالب چې اتل اسکاله و جنګیده اتل اسکاله د افغانانو وینې تو کړې یوازې د قدرت د پاره ایا دا افغان حکومت به وتوانی کې چې هغه ته قناعت ورکی
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ز مولوي سيد محمد اكبر اغا د قندار د ولایت او د رغنداو د ولسوالي او د جلاهور د کلي عالم یم عالم دین او د جهاد په وخت کې مجبه در لود د رسانو په مقابل کې غټه جې طالبانو جبهه مو در لود ورسته تر هغه امریکایان چې راغلو د امریکایانو راتګ زموږ نو خوښ بیا د بنجس په this is Sayyid Muhammad Akbar Hagar, a former commander of the Taliban splinter group Jaish al muslimin He was jailed in 2004 for his role in the kidnap of three UN workers. Pardoned by Hamad Karzai in 2014, Akbar Agar is now head of the Shura-i-Ali Rahi Najat, the High Council of Salvation. He believes a full US withdrawal and the return to a Sharia state will bring peace. It's a Shubhanist. Shariat Islam is not a religion. It's not a Muslim. And the Russian is not a religion. It's 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 not a religion. What does this mean for women's rights? نو کدای سی چې به طالبان یا نور د حکومت چې دل تراسی هغه حکومت کې اسلامي عنانات او اسلامي لحظات او اسلامي اساس پکښې نغښتې وي هغه حکومت به په اسلامي لحاظ باندې ورته وایي چې تا په د نورو په حقوقو باندې تجاوز کړی دی یا مثلا تا خپل په حق باندې قناعت نه دی کړی زیات حق دی وړی دی هغه به دې نه وګرځي زه فکر کوم چې طالبان هم په دې باندې پوهېږي او شاید حکومت هم په دې پوهېږي چې جنګ لار د حل نه ده او دې ته ضرورت شته چې دلته ناشې ته ضرورت شته البته که چیرې طالبان احیانا په جنګ باندې راشي ولایتونه نور ونیسي او کابل ونیسي خو بیا هم ناشې ته ضرورت شته که یو څوک مخالفین پیدا شي او هغه په مخالفت باندې لاس پورې کړي خو طالبان مجبوره دي چې د هغو سره ناشتې وکړي او دا ملک نور توان د دې نشته چې په دې ملک کې جنګونه نور وشي نو زما فکر باندې دې ته ضرورت خامخا لیدل کېږي نو طالبانو به هم دا ضرورت حس کړی وي I've only scratched the surface. Afghanistan is a vast and diverse country and the view from Kabul doesn't tell the whole story. Whatever fears and aspirations its people have for peace, Afghanistan's destiny will likely be shaped by foreign powers. A great game of shifting proxies which never ended. I'm left wondering, is there any room for optimism? I think if you're a natural optimist, uh, this work isn't for you. We, we have to be optimistic. Uh, I've been doing this work for 25 years, so if I was a pessimist, I think by now I would have given up. So I'm optimistic that when human beings get around a table and, and dialogue, outcomes uh, will be good. All, almost all of us you know, have people in our families who have uh, lost their lives to this conflict. I think the entire nation is tired of it, so we should certainly give it a try and embrace the opportunity, even if it comes to uh, uh, you know, swallowing some, some, uh, uh, some bitter pills. Naturally, so people of Afghanistan have always been optimistic. I remember during Taliban when I looked at from the window of my house to the streets of Kabul, I could not see in five minutes one car passing the street because there was no life, basically. We were optimistic then. Now that all these progress happen, of course we are optimistic. At the end of the day, uh, I believe that we have to talk because, um, because uh, there is no war that you can win with war. You have to win war with peace. And then you have to talk because you have to end this bloodshed. 
um, and people of Afghanistan expect that. I am uh, optimistic with caution. Uh, so, of course, every politician in Afghanistan to, should be optimistic, otherwise, of course, we will die. We cannot move, we cannot act, we cannot struggle, we cannot fight. So that's why it is very, very important that we have to be optimistic, but taking caution for every moment, for every step.